The Southern District of New York has submitted a last-minute victim statement corroborating their case against the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City star, Jen Shaw. But it reveals a lot more of a juicy situation that Jen Shaw allegedly had an affair with this individual's husband, and that's the reason why she had to get a temporary restraining order against Jen Shaw. Jen Shaw's attorneys are responding. Welcome back to the Kempire Daily YouTube channel, your number one source for pop culture news and music, entertainment, reality TV, and so much more. As always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. So last night, we had some breaking news that the Real Housewives of Salt Lake City star Jen Shaw, first of all, is already here in New York City for her sentencing tomorrow, okay? Sidebar, Jen, why do you still have direct marketing, blah, 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 in your Instagram bio? The minute you pl you pled guilty, you well, the minute you got arrested, you think you would have removed it, but especially after you pled guilty. Okay. So last night was a new episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. We'll be talking about that episode on the Thursday Thursday live broadcast that we have every single 12, every single Thursday at 12.30 p.m. Eastern. But let's just talk about these breaking details that came out yesterday. The Southern District of New York has submitted another statement. While we were away, there were the victim statements that were revealed. We talked a little bit about what Coordinator Shaw had to say about Jen and her family. She, they submitted all kinds of letters trying to justify and say that don't give her the maximum sentence. But the Southern District of New York wants Jen to serve at least 10 years in prison. And because this is a federal case, I'm not an attorney, but you guys will verify in the comment section, she has to serve, I think, at least 80% of that if she gets that. So, of course, in her character statements, everyone's trying to say, you know, she's been through a lot. She, 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 she's done a lot for the community, blah, 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 blah. But these victim statements... If you read them, give you a whole other side of the scheme that Jen Shaw and other individuals, but she was at the top of this and the last one to plead, what they did and what they caused in these people's lives and continue uh, to affect these people's lives. But this last minute statement that came in was unsolicited. The Southern District of New York had received this letter from this person and corroborated the information that this person provided. And now they're asking the judge to include this in their decision on the amount of time that Jen Shaw should serve. So shout out to our friends over at the Bravo docket. We love them because they just really break down some of these legal mumbo jumbo terms in basic layman's terms that we're able to understand. So they write this, the government has filed a request to add new evidence they just received against Jen Shaw two days before. OK, according to them, after Jen Shaw submitted her memorandum describing her character and requesting a lower sentence, an individual unnamed but referred to as an individual one contacted the government via an unsolicited letter describing their experience with Jen. The government interviewed individual one, which provided them with corroborating evidence on their experience with Jen, including a temporary restraining order and a Nevada police report. The government requests that the court consider the events involving individual one and individual one's letter for sentencing. So this is exactly what the letter said. And if you haven't grabbed a snack yet, pause the video, grab a snack. Story time. So this is what the Southern District of New York, who has a 99% conviction rate. And this is why we all said she needs to plead guilty because this is not going to be good for her. So they say this in their letter to the judge. It says, Dear Judge Stein, the government respectfully provides a supplemental submission in advance of the sentencing of defendant Jennifer Shaw, currently scheduled for January 6, 2023, at 10 a.m. The defendant has relied upon certain descriptions of her character by her family and friends to attempt to justify her request for an extraordinary downward variance. They're basically saying that they're, she's asking for what? I forgot how many years she was asking. I think three years she was asking for. And they're like, no. All right. They continue. In response to the defendant's portrayal of her, quote, character in her public filing, a particular individual, individual one, with whom the government has no previous communications, sent a brief 
unsolicited letter to the government about individual one ex experience with the defendant. All right. And they, they include attachments. After the government received the letter, law enforcement individuals interviewed individual one, notes of which are attached in Exhibit 8, and obtained cooperating materials regarding individual one's react interactions with the defendant, including a temporary restraining order provided by the Justice Court of Henderson Township, Nevada, attached as well, and a police report provided by Henderson, attached as well. And this is from the, the Henderson, Nevada Police Department. And it continues and it says this at the end. Individual one's description of the manner in which the defendant treated her is consistent with the government's understanding of how the defendant frequently interacted with others, including other participants in the business opportunity scheme. The government's request that the court consider the individual one's letter and the events involve, involving individual one as necessary context for the court's analysis under 18 U.S.C. And this is coming from the Southern District of New York. So a lot of people are wondering, okay, so why was there a temporary restraining order? Well, according to TMZ, this was a love triangle. Not really. This was an affair that Jennifer, look, not Jennifer Shaw, inmate Shaw was having with this person's husband. So this is what TMZ writes. So they say this in, in their article. They says, now as for what this mystery woman claims happened, it's quite a tale. Dating back nearly four years, all right, when she alleges that Jennifer Shaw, inmate Shaw, stalked and harassed her. TMZ has obtained the restraining order documents from back then, which were filed in Nevada, and she details an alleged tryst her husband was having with Jen Shaw, which erupted in a blowout when the women sent when the woman sent screenshots to Jennifer Shaw's husband, Coordinator Shaw, aka Sharif Shaw. The woman claims when Jen tried confronting her, she ignored her, which allegedly pissed Jen to the point of her driving across state lines to try to see the woman in person. She alleges Jen showed up unannounced on her doorstep at 2.30 a.m. You remember the story about the Uber driver, Heather Gay sending Jen home in an Uber, and Jen Shaw getting out in the middle of the street in, in that Uber? You remember that? I did a whole video on that, and our friends over at the Bitch Sess interviewed the Uber driver and their allegations. We'll link it somewhere here so you guys can see it. So it makes me wonder, like, where was she going? Was this another situation? You remember, there have been all kinds of, of rumors that her and Meredith were both sharing this man in New York City. There was also a story about Meredith and Jen together. All allegations. Okay. So TMZ continues in regards to this situation. So Jen showed up at this woman's doorstep at 2.30 a.m. According to this woman, she says she eventually called the cops and in the end, the woman got a temporary restraining order granted. Unclear what came of it after that, but it seems prosecutors want a judge to hear about it anyway before deciding how many years Jen Shaw gets in this fraud case. Again, remember, the Southern District of New York wants Jen to get at least 10 years. Well, Jen Shaw's attorneys are responding to this story. Shaw's attorneys, Priya Chaudhry, tells TMZ, we have proof that this woman is lying about this alleged affair. An email from this woman to Ms. Ms. Shaw's husband dated four days after the restraining order in which she acknowledges that there was no affair. This scorned woman lied to, to the prosecutors in an attempt to exact her own revenge against Jen Shaw. Shawji continues. She says Jen has taken full responsibility for, for, for responsibility for her mistakes and accepts that she should be punished for them. It's sad that people will, with an axe to grind, would use this moment to distract from justice. Here's the thing. The Southern District of New York, look, we know our justice system across this country is not perfect. And I know we've said countless times that the Southern District of New York has a conviction rate of 90-something percent. Doesn't mean that they get it right all the time. But what we can say about the Southern District of New York, 
they really do cross their T's and dot their I's. As they said in their statement before submitting this to the judge, they corroborated a lot of this information, not just the restraining order and the police report. They corroborated a lot of this information. And I know what we've seen on this reality show can be exaggerated, could not be 100%. But based on what we've seen of Jennifer Shaw and her behavior off of, off of television is that she's not as clean, she's not as innocent as she pretends to be. And she loves to use race and other things to justify and have people feel sympathy for her. But here's who we should be really having sympathy for. Those victims, and those victim statements describe the level that Jen Shaw took advantage of innocent elderly people for years and made millions off of their backs. And their lives, no matter how you feel, even if she goes to jail, doesn't mean that their lives have been righted, that their situation has been resolved. Because she still owes money to them. But she's throwing lavish parties and, and spending this money on fake Louis Vuitton and, and, and other brands. Jen Shaw is not who we think she is. Yes, she's provided some really funny, entertaining moments on The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. But in all reality, Jen Shaw is a criminal. And we will find out this Friday how much of a criminal that she is and how much time she will serve for being that criminal. Guys, as always, I want to know your reaction to this victim's statement and any other thoughts that you have on the latest episode of The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Let's have that conversation in the comment section. And as always, be sure to like this video, subscribe to the channel, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on breaking news when we go live or when we upload. Happy New Year, and thanks for watching.